Okay, I want to show you how to do a brute force attack on a keypad. Uh, let's say you want to unlock this keypad and it has four digits and you don't know what they are, so you want to you want to do that. I've made a version that has LED lights with a Raspberry Pi, but maybe you don't have that and you want to play with the code. So here is a simulated Raspberry Pi right here with some lights, and this is a code in Trinket.io, so it's in, it's embedded in a web page, so you can play with it that way. So let me just go through this code really quickly and show you how it works. Uh, some parts you could probably just gloss over, they don't really matter. So this first part imports the different modules that we'll need to control this particular uh, board. This is actually the sense hat for Raspberry Pi. It's a pretty cool thing. Okay, so import time and random are important for making it wait and for getting a random number. Uh, this just gives, in line 5 here, we just have the label of the sense hat, so we can call it S. Um, code makes a random four digit number. So between 0 and 10,000, so the highest it would be it would be 9,999 or 9999. Uh, these don't really matter. These are just color combinations for the different LEDs. Uh, you can worry about that later if you want. Okay, so here, in order to make the button, I want to make a button for the one button. So this is my, suppose this is my keypad over here. I want these four LEDs up in the top to simulate the one button. So up here, I tell it, I have to tell Raz the uh, Python which buttons, which LEDs to turn on. So this makes those four white and the other one's nothing. And I'm going to call that one. And then I do the same thing for two with these four lights and so forth. I do three, four, five, six, blah, 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 seven. This is kind of tedious, but you got to do it. Uh, and then I have one other function when, if you get the right code, it turns all the buttons, not all the pixels, all the buttons red. That's it. Okay, now here, this is an important line, 228, images. This is just a list of all those different images I can make on the sense hat. And they're in order so that I can address them easily. So I can just run through and go 0, 1, 2, 3. It'll be, make it easier for me to turn those on and off. Now I have this button, push button. It's a function, push button. This pushes the buttons uh, A, B, C, D, whatever values I give for A, B, C, and D in that order. Uh, so it just goes through, it sets set pixel image A, so it turns on A, whatever, if A is 3, it turns on the third, uh, or turns on number 3, and it do that button and so forth. And then it turns it off. Okay. D1, D2, D3, and D4 are just number, ranges between, a list between 0 and 9. They're numbers 0 to 9. And I use those to cycle through the different four digits. And that's what I do here in line 263. So this first one is a loop over the uh, D1, and inside of that loop, I loop over D2, and inside of that, I loop do D3, and so forth, and D4. So these four loops together, nested loops, will go through all the different permutations of things. You could even put print out what each one is so you can see what's going on. And then I, so I push those numbers, and then I make a number out of those four digits. So the, uh, the thousandths place is multiplied by a thousand, plus the hundreds place, multiply by 100, the tens place multiplied by 10, and then the, the singles, the digit, single digit. And then I get a number, and I can see if that number is equal to the code, then I stop. And I have to do that four times for each loop. And then I print the code, and that's it. Okay, so let's run this one. Uh, it may take a while to run if I have a large code number. You can see here it's going through all the different sequences, starting with the zeros, so it will take a while. I'm not going to let it run through. Um, but you can you can you can set the code to whatever you want. But I put a random number, and it runs for a while, and then you get the code, and that's how you brute force attack a lock, which you shouldn't really do.